Yeah, give God some praise. Miss Debbie, uh, and I've, I've known Miss Debbie for a while. She's had, you know, neck issue, issues and stuff like that, but she got prayer last week that um, it was life-changing. I want her to just take a minute and, and tell you about it. Well, last Sunday morning I was in here, and I could barely move. Went to the altar, laid it on the altar, stood up here with the rest of the family, and Ronnie come and said, your neck, I said, he prayed for my neck, he prayed for my back, and thank Jesus, I have no more pain. I have put it through the test. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Pain free. Listen, I, I've watched her. Come on, give God, yeah, give God some praise, man. He's the healer in the house. And if you're here, you got brokenness, you got pain, he can take it away today. You don't have to, you don't have to leave it. And I'll ask uh, Jeff to come down. Yeah, the, the listener, yeah, both of them. Both Jeff's got a little testimony, so that's good. And we're going to let him amen. speak of what happened to him and what he's been through and what happened Sunday after prayer. Amen, amen. Uh, good morning, church. Uh, uh, last Sunday, I had gone to the doctor the Thursday before, and uh, I had some symptoms of vertigo. And uh, so uh, I was laying in bed one night, turned to the left. All of a sudden, the room started spinning, um, just really bad so I went to the do doctor I got evaluated so they said you what we have is we have crystals in our ears and they have to stay in a certain place well mine moved and not only that it was in the left ear when normally it's in the right ear uh, and it was in the upper canal when it's normally in the lower canal so uh, pastor prayed over me Sunday I didn't really you know think anything about it so about midday Monday, I went, uh, you know, I'm going about my business, and I'm like, you know what? Uh, the room didn't spin last night. So, uh, you know, I just want to give thanks to God. You know, he is, God is good. He is the great physician. He is the healer. He can do all things, all things. Amen. Appreciate you, brother. Come on down, brother Jeff. Oh, I'm not used to microphones. I got a big voice anyway. <laughs> uh, so I've been having some issues with my lungs. You know, I've smoked for about 20 years and had a lot of drug use and all that garbage. But that's not really the message I'm here to convey. Ronnie, I come down last week and let him let him pray over me, and uh, within 10 to 12 hours, gone completely. And I was having a lot of pain. <clears throat> but the message I want to give to the church about that is: listen, if you're having pains. And spiritual or physical, but you don't want to come down here. That's because that old devil's putting doubt in your heart. That's that's what he does. That's that's how they, that's how he works. He wants to put doubt and fear in your heart. But but our Lord Jesus doesn't work that way. So if you're having them doubts and fears, you overcome them. You get down here and you let you let Jesus work in your life. That's all I got to say. Y'all, what y'all don't know is we, we got another preacher in the house. This is this is Reb. <laughs> he won't. He won't claim it. He's very humble. But he, he went to the jail um, Thursday night along with Brett too. But he, he spoke before Brett, and it, it was. Um, or did he speak after you? I don't remember. Before, yeah. And it, it was very powerful. And uh, never heard a man say a, a, almost a full sentence a lot of times. Jeff's kind of quiet, you know. And man, he began to speak and flow. I said, I don't know if you realize that, but uh, man, you you you've got a calling, you know. It, it was a natural flow from the heart, and man, them guys received it. And then Brett got up there, man. Brett delivered a message, and we just had a Holy Ghost throwdown Thursday night in the jail. It was, hey, there was four of us there. It was amazing uh, what God's doing there, and four souls prayed the prayer of salvation, and asked Christ to, to to save them and wash them and cleanse them, and it was amazing, man. So just give God praise for what He's doing if we'll be obedient. Hey, man, I just had to, wanted to share that with y'all and encourage you this morning. I, I, there's power in testimony, you know, because here, here's the thing. Um, with testimony, nobody can take that away. A religious doctrine can't take that away. Um, religious people can't take that away. The unbelievers can't take that away. And the Bible says we overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb. In the words of our testimony, that's how we overcome in these last days. As we see the day approaching, amen, we gather together, we encourage one another, and we say, you know what, Jesus is still a healer. Amidst all the chaos in the world, listen, his church is still on fire. 
He still has a remnant, and he always has, and he always will, and he has not forgotten about his people. And I'm just glad that we're one of these little end-time churches that, that's seeing revival, that's seeing the power of God, that's seeing the deliverance, that's seeing the healings, that's seeing the working of miracles, which is one of the nine gifts of the Spirit. A lot of people don't realize that it's a working of a miracle. It's a step of faith. We pray and say, do something you couldn't do before. When you do it, bam, God heals. So it's obedience through a word, amen. So just remember, if you, if you need a healing today, when we pray and give a command, do whatever you're told to do, move it, whatever, and, and watch God work a miracle. It's called the working of a miracle. Just like when, when Peter and then they come up to the, the man at the, the gate of uh, the temple, beautiful, he said, look, silver and gold I ain't got, but what I do have, get up in the name of Jesus. And he grabbed his hand, that man leaped to his feet, listen. We've got a earthen treasure. We've, we've got a, a, a treasure in these earthen vessels, like I told you earlier. If we'll just share it, if we'll just release it, freely you've received, freely we give. Amen. We give. Just God. Listen, God's unlimited. He's He's omnipotent. Amen. He's omni. He's everywhere. He's all knowing, and He's always. He never runs out of power. He never runs out. Of, you're not going to run Him out. Amen. He He's He holds it all together in the name of Jesus. Amen. So let's look at um, Isaiah 54. My message this morning. It's called Forged by Fire. And I sent out a message on Facebook last week and kind of speaking a little bit on it. And the Lord told me to make a message out of it. And, and this is going to be, it's going to hit a lot of different areas. It's going to hit people that are saved. It's going to hit maybe some people that are newly saved. And they feel like God's calling them into the ministry. This is going to give you, yeah, youth and, youth and children are going to be dismissed. I'm sorry. It's going to give you the, um, the ability and vision you know, when God calls us to do something, he brings us through it. But here's the thing. We can't, there's no shortcuts in ministry. You can't just go around and do things your way. You have to be forged through a fire. That vessel, the vessel, you're the vessel. You have to be forged. You have to be tested. And you have to be tried because God has to trust you. And I'm going to explain some of that in this message today. Hallelujah. Yeah, You've got to be tested and tried and allow God to forge you in the fire. And the forging, the, the, when, the, when the fire gets hot, that's not the fun part. And I've told my leadership, you're, it's going to happen to you. If you want to serve God, you're going to go through the fire. And the thing is, a lot of people don't like the fire, they don't like the heat, and they don't last. They wasn't cut out for it. Amen. But God will bring you through it if he brings you to it. So that's what I wanted to speak on. Um, and let's go ahead and let's just pray this morning. Let's just pray. Let's bow our heads and just ask the Lord to, to guide me this morning. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the awesome service this morning. God, we thank you for the great testimonies. Lord, you are the great physician. Not only did you create us, you know how to heal us and bring healing into our bodies. And Lord, we want to get to a point in our life where we fully trust you for everything. For our finances, our bodily healing, Lord God, because we know everything's messed up out in the world. You know, they've got a pill for everything. And I do too. It's called the gospel. Amen. And sometimes it's hard to swallow. And it's like some, some good medicine sometimes. It, 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 ain't, it don't taste very good. But Lord, if you'll swallow it, if we'll swallow it and, and, and breathe in your word, God, it'll bring life to us, the Bible says. Your, your word's like water. It's cleansing, Lord God. And your holy fire is like a refiner's fire. And we thank you for the holy fire. We thank you, Lord, that you're taking some of us through the process to carry the things that you want to carry us in these end, day, end days, Lord. And Father, we give you the praise, Lord. We give you the glory this morning, God. And I ask you to move me as your vessel out of the way, Lord. Let you be the river, and let me be that riverbed this morning. God, flow through me. Let it not be my words, but let it be your words. I am your mouthpiece this morning, Lord. And Father, I thank you for that. And I bless you in Jesus' name. We all said amen and amen. So we're going to look at a, a text here in Isaiah 54, and um, it's 16 through 17. But when we back up a little bit, God is, um, in Isaiah 54, he's reassuring the people of, of Israel their covenant. He's, he's assuring them the covenant he has. I know you might be barren now. I know you might be lost now. I know, you, I know you failed, but there's a day coming. There's a Redeemer coming, the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, when all your tears are going to be wiped away, all your pain's going to be wiped away. And he said, that day's coming. So he was reassuring him. He said, even though you've turned on me, he said, I haven't forgotten about you. Even, even though you felt like I've forsaken you for a season, I haven't forgotten about you. 
And I don't know what you're dealing with, what somebody's dealing with this morning. Maybe, maybe you're broken. Maybe you come in lost. You have no direction. And maybe you've been out in the world. You've messed up. I'm telling you, you've got a Father in heaven that loves you with an everlasting love. And if you'll turn from your sin and turn to Jesus, he'll forgive you. He'll wash you. He'll cleanse you this morning. I don't care what you've done. There's nothing more powerful than the blood of Jesus. No sin that you've ever committed is more powerful than the blood of Jesus this morning. So we see Isaiah 54, 16 through 17. Let's read it. It says, Behold, I have created the blacksmith who blows, coal, blows the coals in the fire. Say in the fire. Who brings forth an instrument for his work. You and I, we are that instrument for his work. Will you go through the fire? Will you go through the testing? Will you allow him to hammer on you this morning? And he said, I have created the spoiler to destroy. Are you the spoiler this morning? Are you, are you going to allow yourself to be the spoiler to destroy the works of the enemy? And the Bible says in verse 17 here in Isaiah, it says, No weapon, no weapon formed against you. Listen, folks, there's going to be weapons that forms against you. And sometimes it's people. Sometimes they'll form, the enemy will use people to form weapons against you. He said, but no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And when he says shall, that means it will not prosper. So you need to get that in your spirit this morning. I don't know what you're battling, what's coming against you, but no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And I can tell you, in seven years, I've had many weapons formed against me, but I tell you, none of them has prospered. I'm still standing here preaching the gospel. Listen, I thank God for the listen, I thank God for what he's done. I thank God for those that's come against me. I thank God because why? Because my haters have become my elevators. And you'll learn that. God will use the people to hate you. God will use the people that hate you to grow you and forge you and hammer you in the fire this morning. So I thank God for the enemies. I pray even even Paul said, he said, he said, I've got a thorn in my flesh. He said that the enemy, why? Because of his many revelations, he was buffeted. The thorn in his flesh was not an infirmity. It was people. Why? Because of his many revelations. It kept Paul from getting puffed up. He said, so he sent that messenger that, 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 of Satan to buffet him, to buffet him, to keep him humble, to smack him down every now and again, to give him 42 lashes, to shipwreck him, amen, to bust him up. That's what, that's what the enemy done, and God allowed the enemy to do that to keep him humble. Thank God for your haters. Praise God when he said, look, blessed are you when, when people come against you and revile you and persecute you. He says you're blessed. Amen. He says you're blessed. Amen. He said if they, Jesus said, no, no servant is above the master. If they hated you, they're going to hate me. Amen. Or if they hated me, they're going to hate you. Got it backwards. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, y'all didn't catch it. So I, I was just checking y'all to see if you were catching it. But he says every tongue that rises against you and uh, in judgment, he said, you shall condemn. You shall condemn. You can snatch that devil's tongue right out of his mouth and say, not today, devil. What you formed against me will not prosper this morning. I snatched the tongue right out of the lion devil. And that's why we need to live our life. When people begin to lie on you and people begin to curse, persecute you, when they begin to lie on you, people say, nope, that's not them. I know that person. It, it's not even true. People don't even believe it because you live your life in such a way with integrity and with power that they know. No, it's a man of God or a woman of God. I know they wouldn't say that. I know they wouldn't do that. People don't even believe the lie. That's how you need to live your life. Amen. He says, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. No weapon's going to form against you, and when a tongue rises against you, you're going to snatch it out of their mouth. That's what the Bible says. He says, and their righteousness is from me. We get our righteousness, says the Lord. And that's what I want to speak on this morning is the process of forging. We start out as raw material. See, we get saved, and God begins to forge us through the fire. It's never fun, but it's, it's part of the process. It's part of the process, and I brought, uh, you know, Jeremy Brown, our youth pastor, his dad, Alan, handmade me this knife a few years, years back, and when you look at it, it's got some, still some infirmity, but he handmade this, the handle, all handmade, handmade thing, and it was forged in the fire, and I think he said he used it out of a leaf spring, and when you do that, you got to throw it in the fire, you got to heat it up, it's got to get red, you pull it out, and you hammer it down, and you flatten it out, and there's all kinds of a process that it goes through, Right? But we start out like how this thing started out was maybe just a piece of metal. And we have to be forged in that process. We start out as that piece of metal. But when we get done, that's our finished work. 
we're, we're formed, we're forward. See, we get saved and we get happy. I've seen so many people come here two or three months, we're happy. We get saved. We've got this new love. Jesus loves me. My sins are forgiven. Wow. And all of a sudden, bam. Bam. Here comes the enemy. Here comes the fire. God says, okay, here, how can you handle this? And most, I'm going to tell you, a big percentage of people fall off in that first fire. They fall off in that first fire. I'm trying to teach you this morning for some of y'all young ones in there. It's never fun, but it's part of the process. See, that's what happens. See, we see, I'm going to show you some circumstances that, that you might be going through now that you're thinking, oh my gosh, everything's falling apart. But see, it's the enemy. The, the God is using the enemy maybe to bring some of this stuff to forge you in the fire. Can you handle the process? Because if, if you can't handle the process, he can't put his power in you. He can't put his glory in you because you can't contain it. I'm trying to teach somebody this morning. See, the outside circumstances stances caused by your job, economic condition, your boss, maybe your neighbor, things like that begin to form against you. I've had my boss, my, my you know, company sometimes, at, at, and seasons come against me, and I feel like everything's coming down. I'm like, man, what's going on here? It's the enemy using him to forge me and for me to trust him. So look, trust, just go through this and trust me. It feels like everything's caving in, even maybe a neighbor that, that you're having issues with. And see, it's causing you to feel heat. It's causing you to feel pressure. Just remember, you're in that forging process. He's got you in the fire right now. He's got you in the fire with whatever you're going through this morning. And see, so we also got, it could be uh, strain in relationships. This could be another thing. With your wife, your parents, other church members, your children, causing the temperature of your life to rise. This is part of the process, and I've told all my leadership, I said, look, you're going to have to go through these fires. I've been through them over and over again, and I recognize them. I see it. I said, Lord, I know you're in this fire. I'm just praising him in the fire because I know he's doing some forging because I'm getting ready to go to another level in the Lord Jesus Christ when I'm in that fire. Amen. So, so when you got your family coming against you and your people, your naysayers, and they come in, your, your kids are cussing you out, and you got all this stuff going on, that is just a process in the fire. God says, I'm forging you, I'm showing you, and I'm getting you to rely on me more than yourself that's part of the forging that's part of the he's doing some hammering he's doing some hammering this morning it could be a um it could be maybe your sin has found you out and you're suffering the consequences is another thing it might be a, you know you've been in sin it's been found out now the pressure's hit now the, you're being forged you're being forged he's hammering on it and he's straightening things up he's strengthening you because when you put that in the, and the heat helps strengthen the metal and we all have to go through it and we see this. James tells us in James 1, 2, 4, says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various troubles. I've seen people, well, you know, I started going to church. My dog died. My dad died. And this died. I see you're going through a fiery trial. Hang in there just a little bit. It will get better. And they fall out. And they miss. I've seen people miss their call because the pressure comes in. And they just quit. And they throw everything. I'm done. And all of a sudden, now they're out of the will of God because the enemy pulled them out and they didn't realize they wasn't strong enough and they weren't ready for the position that they put in. And I'm going to get into that, not being put in a position too soon. See, we go, we get saved and some go to the wilderness for testing and some go to the cemetery, I mean cemetery, to get knowledge. Did you hear what I said? Some go to the wilderness to get tried and tested and some just go to the cemetery. Some just grabbed the, the microphone and went. Some are called, and then they get sent. That's what we have in America. We've raised up a, 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 a generation of preachers that have no anointing. They have no power. They can't set the captives free in the preaching. They have no boldness. They have no Holy Ghost because they chose to have knowledge instead of going through the wilderness, going through the fiery trials. We went to cemetery, and they tell us how to build a church, how to bring people in, how to manipulate people, and how to do all this stuff. And God says, look, if you'll do it my way and go through the process, you'll have power. You'll have anointing. I'll be with you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And that's what we have. We have a generation of spineless, no backbone, pansy preachers that will not stand up and preach the truth on a Sunday morning. And that's why we got people bound. They're lost. They're addicted because nobody will stand up and preach the truth. Thus saith the Lord. And I'm glad I found a few preachers up in this house that'll preach this morning. We see Moses spent 40 years in the backside of a desert. He was 80 years old for God. 40 years in a desert. Paul spent three and a half years in the Arabian desert after he got saved, had the encounter with Jesus. Why? To get with Jesus, to be tested, to be tried, to, be, to, to fast, to pray, and seek out his will. He was being tested. There's a wilderness. 
There's a will, there was forging. God was forging him. The disciples spent three and a half years with Jesus. They were being forged with him. They were actually with him being forged. You're with him now in spirit. You're with him now in a word. And you've got to have to go through these process if you're ever going to do anything big for God. There is no way around. See, there's no way around this. And see, there's times that we think we failed, but really it's being forged. God showed me it. We think we're failure when, when all hell breaks out in your home or your business or your work or whatever. We think that's failure. No, God says it's forging. I have to take you through this process. I have to, that vessel has to be forged. It has to be sharpened. It has to be beat on a little bit. Because if you want God's glory in your life, you have to go through that process. Amen. There's no way around it. We've got a bunch of unprocessed preachers. They preach from here, and they don't preach from the Spirit. Captives leave the church the same way they come in because the bible says in ten, isaiah 10 27 that it's the anointing that breaks the yokes it lifts the burdens off their neck it breaks the yokes off their neck and lifts the burdens off their shoulder he says it's because of the anointing it's because of the anointing that's what breaks the yoke we can we can speak good we can have eloquent speech we can eloquently sing but if there's no anointing in it and the holy ghost ain't in it they will not break yokes and set captives free it won't happen so we see there's no shortcuts. And so now I'm going to get into another thing here, what Paul tells Timothy in, in 1 Timothy 5.22. I'm going to have to take a drink because I'm drying up this morning already. <laughs> getting a little hot up in here. And we see here it says, Do not lay hands on anyone hastily, nor share in other people's sins. Keep yourself pure. And it says, do not hastily appoint any person to the sacred ministry is what he's talking about. Do not quickly bring somebody in ministry because if they're, not, if they're in sin and they haven't been forged and they haven't been purified, your congregation is going to partake in those sins of that person if they're put in position too quickly. It'll suffer. And that's what he's talking about. And what happens when people, I'm going to talk about pride for a minute. This is what happens when people get put into position too soon. Too soon. That's what happens. Listen, the problem with putting someone in a leadership position too soon is the person does not have the character. They will train wreck their ministry. Because what happens, they, don't, they haven't developed the character. They haven't been through the forging. And when what happens, the enemy can say, look how good you are. Look how great you can do this. Look how great you can preach. Look how great you can sing. Look how great you can, all the gifting. He says, ooh, man, you're so good. You don't need God anymore. Do we, do we remember that when he told the devil that? The devil began to lift himself up. So if somebody's not tested and tried in that vessel and they don't have the character, they can't hold what God, if, they, if they're put in ministry too soon, they'll fall. And that's a huge mistake. And as pastors, we have to recognize that. And, we have to, and I've told all my ministry that. I said, I don't care how, how gifted you are, how talented you are. You've got to love God first, and you've got to love people because that's what matters. All, the gifting doesn't matter. You've got to love God, and you've got to love people. I'll take a mediocre preacher, teacher, singer over somebody that can see the lights out if they, as long as they love people. Amen. you got to love the people. you got to love the people. you got to have the anointing. you got to go through the process. And that's what I've always, I've always emphasized, that in that process, it's, 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 a time, it's a timely process. God can't keep you in the fire and say, oh, you're all done now. You're good to go for ministry. No, it's in and out of that fire, in and out of that forging, in and out, hammering. When the, guy, when the man is forging, he's, he's got it in there, and he's back out. In there, back out. And hammer on it, in there. And it's, it's a process, and that's what God does with us. And you're going to have to go through that. And see what happens. Uh, if you're in there too soon, pride, arrogance, and self-exaltation will be, it begin to enter in setting the person up for destruction of their ministry. And that's what I've been, and the Bible says in Proverbs 16, 18, 19, he said, pride goes before destruction. That means when pride enters in, destruction's coming. And a haughty spirit before a fall. If you're haughty and all that stuff, you're getting ready to fall. If you don't, if you don't, it says better to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than divide the spoil of the proud. Amen. And it's just like what happened to Satan. And, I, and I've always wondered, I said, you know, and I'm just going to use myself as a testimony. Me and my wife, we've been in ministry for six and a half years, going on seven years. Since we got saved, we jumped right into ministry, started preaching the gospel. And I've struggled with a lot of things. And I didn't realize it until during this fast, God revealed things to me. And now we're seeing the working of miracles in the past few weeks. We've seen some supernatural stuff. And not only that, they're happening immediately. They're happening immediately. 
And the Lord said, look, I know you was wanting those five years ago, but you weren't ready for it. You didn't have the character. But why? Because pride and arrogance and all that stuff will begin to come in. He said, if I don't have you, shake, you will fall, and it will destroy your ministry. It could take you completely out. And I realized all that. And I said, that, that's what I, so because there was times I said, Lord, I believe we would pray. Nothing would happen. And then we prayed. So it was hit and miss on healings and deliver. It was just, it was hit and miss. And I never understood why. But we kept on. I said, you know, I don't care if I see anything. We're going to keep praying. We're going to keep believing because it's God's word. And we stuck through that process. Do you know how many times I've been discouraged? We've prayed for people and they've died. Do you know how many times I've been discouraged and want to quit? God says, you can't quit. You keep going. I am forging you in that fire. That way you can handle it. When the victory starts coming and the, and the people start getting healed and revival breaks out, you will be able to handle it because you know what you've had to go through to get there. And I wish somebody to shout hallelujah this morning. We know the hell that we've been through. And every time you go to another level and more miracles, you got more religious folks come against you. It ain't the people in the world. It's the religious organizations that will come against you because your miracles, don't line, they don't line up with their word of God. It doesn't line up with their doctrine. And that's where the fight comes in. Well, I don't believe this. We believe this. Well, I don't care what you believe. I'm going to tell you what we see. I'm going to tell you what we experience. We know God heals. We know God delivers. We know God blesses. Jesus said if there's a devil, he didn't say medicate a devil, cast him out. He didn't say send the sick to the doctor. He said lay hands on them and heal them in his name. That's what I've learned. And if you'll go through that process, and I didn't know it then because I was like, Lord, what's going on? He said, you could not carry what I was giving you then. You wasn't ready. Some of you all been praying about things. Some of you seen things, and you're saying, you know, why ain't this happening? He says, you're, not, I'm, you're in the process. Just wait, wait endure. I want to encourage somebody. Keep going. Keep enduring when the fire and the flames get hot, and everything, everybody's dying, and everything's falling apart, and your dog won't bark, and your car won't start, and you ain't got mo money for groceries. Keep praying and keep pushing. You're in a fiery trial, and he wants to test you to see if you'll trust him. I wish somebody would give me an amen this morning. So we see in Ezekiel 28 when I'm talking about pride here. So we, can, so we can speak on pride and I can bring that to the surface, but you have to make a choice. There's something you have to do about it. You have to make that turn. You have to make that turn. Listen, because what we do up here, when we worship and we preach, this ain't a show. Amen. This is not entertainment. I'm here to set captives free and see God move and see his kingdom right here on earth. He said, let it be done on earth as it is in heaven. His glory is in heaven. I want to see his glory in the church. One more time, one more revival. And I thank God when the, when the world's going to hell in a hand biscuit basket that his church is still on fire, it's still moving, and he still has a remnant in the mighty name of Jesus. So we see the fall. We see the fall of Satan right here. And it, and it shows us. Let's don't enter into this. It says, verse 11, More, Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamb in it for the king of Tyre, and said to him, Thus saith the Lord God. He's talking about Satan right here, Lucifer. You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardis, topaz, diamond, beryl, onyx, and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. Listen, he was beautiful, anointed, perfect in every way. But listen. He said, it was prepared for you on the day you were created. Let me tell you something about the devil. He's under your feet this morning. Luke 10, 18 said, I give you authority to trample on serpents, scorpions, and the raw powers of the enemy. He is a created being, and he's created by your God that you serve this morning. So put him under your feet because he's already under Jesus' feet. So we see here, he says, you are the anointed cherubim who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery tones. You were imperfect in your, all your ways from the day you were created till inequity was found in you. Inequity, inequity. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God. He was on the mountain of God. And I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Listen, your heart... His heart was lifted up because of your beauty. Vanity came, and then pride came in. When you start getting your eyes on yourself, get ready, because you're getting ready to fall. Pride's getting ready to enter in, and you're getting ready for a fall. I'm trying to preach somebody this morning. I'm trying to preach somebody. I'm trying to keep somebody from falling this morning. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. He'll lift you up. We see here. You were corrupted for your, 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 you corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I laid you before kings that they may glaze at you. They gaze at you. 
First, first came vanity, and then came pride. If you, want to be ex if you want God to exalt you, humble yourself. It's opposite. You want to go up, you got to go down. Amen. If you want to live, you got to die. you got to take up your cross and carry it. God's opposite. Listen, that's how it works, folks. That's kingdom. That's kingdom. It's just the opposite of what the world. The world says, look at me, look at me, and keep your eyes on you. And God says, no, humble yourself, and I will lift you up. He said, I will lift you up. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but God has seen your secret place time. And I'm telling you, he sees what you do in secret, and he says he will reward openly. I've seen him do it over and over and over again. He said, I will prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies. Amen. And I love it. He, that means he's going to lay it out, and he's going to let you feast on all that prayer time. He's going to let you feast in front of your enemies, those ones that came against you, those ones that called your names, the ones that said you were no good, tried to destroy your ministry. He said, you're going to eat in front of them. Amen. I'm going to prepare a table for you. Yeah. That's the goodness of the Lord. So he sees, listen, he sees what you're doing in the secret place. Be patient and watch him reward you. Watch him reward you. If you're ever going to serve God in his kingdom, you will have to go through this process. You must have a servant's heart. If you want God's anointing in your life, you must learn to do uh, serving the small things. And that's where I start. Now, there's many witnesses here. I'm not, listen, I'm not bragging on me this morning. I'm trying to tell you where I come from. I'm trying to tell you how God's put me where he's at right now. And I'm going to tell you where it started. Right here. Toilet bowl ministry right here. Right here. Look, we all, listen, we all want this right here. But I'm going to tell you it starts right here. Cleaning them, listen, cleaning them tidy bowls. Cleaning them tidy. Every, listen, every, me and my wife, the first three years, and I thank God I have an awesome pastor, Pastor Mike Miller. Still, look, when me and him get on the phone, we can't get off the phone. So we're hesitating on calling each other. We know we're going to be on there a while. And what he's poured into me, I pour back into him. I call my pastor. I pray, I pray for him. I encourage him. I tell him, I love you. I thank you. I thank you for spending time and really being a servant and, and allowing me to live life with you and go on trips with you and watch your life. And that's the great thing about a real pastor, a real disciple maker. You, you can watch his life. There's nothing hidden. And I thank God for that. But I'm going to tell you, when I got saved, the fire of God come upon me. I was hungry for God. I had nothing, didn't know anything about Scripture. But I said, God, I want to serve you. I don't care if it's the doorman in the house. David said this, I'd rather be a doorman in the house of God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Amen. I'm just looking for some doormen. and so, say, you know, I love you, God. I want to serve you. But it started with the toy. I said, so we got in there. Listen, we didn't miss a service for three years. Every Tuesday, every Thursday, and every Sunday. Unless I was working, we were there. We did not miss a service. I remember one time, I, the first six months of being saved, a tree fell in the road, stopped me from going to church. I went back. We got the chainsaw, and I got out there with the fire department. I said, listen, I got to go to church. This tree ain't stopping me from where my help comes from. I got to get to church. Because I know where my help comes from. I didn't want to go back into that lifestyle. I had a pastor that loved me, that would pray for me, and that would help me through those times because I had to fill that void of the drinking and all the other stuff I was doing with, with God. Amen. So I got in church. I got rooted in. And I just grabbed the toilet brush and said, Pastor, I don't, know what, I don't know what you need me to do, but I want to do it. And he said, look, we clean the church every Tuesday before a prayer service. I said, I want to do it. We're going to do it. So we showed up every single Tuesday. We had a great time. We would go in there, clean the bowls. Man, we would clean, clean, clean. And then we go over and we get, the, we get this right here. We get Some of, some of y'all may not know what this is. I don't know. We get that mop. We get that mop. Listen, we were swabbing, boy. Listen, I just, Jesus, I love you, Jesus. I praise you, Lord. I just thank you, God, that you saved me. I thank you, Lord, that you set me free. I thank you, Lord, you got my feet up on the rock. And I would just praise him. And I, just, and I had a pastor, and I would, just, I would stick with him, and I would listen to him, and I would glean from his experience and glean from the things that he went to. And, and I said, I was hungry. I was hungry. I said, Lord, whatever I can do, whatever I can do. And I'm telling you, when you get, you get one of these, you get one of them, God will anoint your life. Amen. He'll anoint your life. He said, if I can trust you to clean the church every Sunday, I can trust you with my people. I can trust you with my anointing. I can trust you with my power. I can trust you with my gifting. If, I, if you that love me that much, you'll be faithful. I didn't even think about preaching. It wasn't even on my heart. I was just doing this. I just, you know, praising God every single Tuesday. Every single Tuesday. Listen, you want to be lifted up? Humble yourself. Grab you a toilet brush. Grab you a mop. Find yourself. Look, we got parking lot ministry out there. I don't know how many times that, well, I work the parking lot, and you don't show up in time, or they don't even show up at all. There's things to do around here. If you want to preach in this pulpit, and you want to be used by God, I'm telling you, if you want an anointing, go down, and he'll lift you up. Amen. Find what needs to be done and do it. I ain't playing. I'm telling you right now. I'm preaching truth because I'm trying to help somebody this morning. You want God's anointing, be effective.
So he anointed David as king over all the brothers. All the ones they thought that they were setting messes up religious folks when they used an alcoholic, they used a drug addict, they used a prostitute and a murderer. They can't understand it. He takes the, the, the foolish things of this world and he confounds the wise with it. And that's what he does. And I'm telling you, if you'll humble yourself and you'll do those things, God will use you in a mighty way. He anointed David as king and then he sent him out in the pasture. He was anointed, but he wasn't appointed. He hadn't been through the fiery trials. He hadn't had the king come against his own brethren, the one that loved him, the one he served, had come against him. Came against him and tried to kill him. See, he wasn't ready yet, but he survived. He said, Lord, I trust you. I know the fire. I know people's against me right now. He, he, he slayed the giant, and all of a sudden, Lord, you know, he, uh, David slain the 10,000 and Saul his thousand. They, they, began to, they began to see that God was lifting him up. They began to see the anointing of God in his life. The one that was, the, the warrior was out with the big Philistine giant would speak and he would scare and he would intimidate God's people. But he said, no, I've got one that ain't going to be intimidated. He trusts me. He knows me. He loves me. And he knows if God be for you, who could be against you? No weapon formed against you will prosper this morning. Any tongue that rises up against you, you'll snatch it out of the mouth of that devil. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I'm trying to preach to somebody this morning. If you'll hang in there, you'll hang in there. Let the people talk about you. Let your children and your parents smack you in the face and walk away from you. If you'll endure those trials, he'll use you in a mighty way. Well, y'all got questions. It's called Tidy Bowl Ministry. Tidy Bowl Ministry. I'm telling you, man, grab it. Like I said, we, we want this, but you got to grab that. You got to grab it, folks. And I watch those things. I watch when people come. I watch servants. Because I know if they're serving with the little things, they're faithful with the little things, God's calling them. He's going to anoint them. I already know it. I've seen it. I'm just sharing with you what God's done in my life. It's no bragging about no means. Because I don't say it to a lot of people. But I want to encourage you all. i got a lot of young preachers in here this morning. And I want to encourage you all. You're in the right place. You're in the right place this morning. So we see that. And, and like I said, my pasture was full of integrity. I'm telling you, he had people come against him and, and everything else. But his integrity, people knew, said, no, that is not the Mike Miller I know. I, you're trying to say this stuff, but that's not him. And people knew. Why? Because he walked in integrity. Don't let anybody take your integrity. See, integrity, we can all be churchy up in the church house. We can all be churchy out there in public and ah, la, 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 whatever. Who are you in the secret place? Who are you when nobody's around? That's who you really are. That's where integrity comes in. When, when nobody but you and God, you're, you're scrolling, looking at that pornography on your computer or phone, see, that's, that's who you are in, in the secret place. See, see, God knows those things. And if you're struggling with that this morning, he can set you free. But I'm telling you, who are you when nobody's looking? That's who you really are. That's integrity. I, will, I live my life as, there's a camera, as, there, as if there's a camera on me all the time. Because there is, God's with you all the time. He knows everything you do. That's integrity. He says, I can trust you. I know, I know what you do in the secret place. I know I've had people hand me cash money on things. Says, Look, do whatever. I say, it's going to the ministry. It's going to the outreach. I don't want it. God knows. He entrusts you. He entrusts you because he owns it all anyway. That's a test. He'll test and see if you're going to put it in your pocket. That's what he does. That's what he does. That's integrity. That's integrity. I'm preaching to somebody this morning. You can learn this morning. if You, you glean off this this morning. But we see here, I want to be anointed and sent by God. I don't want to send myself. I said, Lord, look, I, I told, I, I've, me and Sean stopped with that. I told the Lord, I said, you know, I'll, I'll preach for you, and I'll teach for you. I'll do whatever you ask me to do. But, Lord, only if you go with me. Yeah. Only if you'll confirm this right here. Because I want them to know that me and you are one, and that when we preach, you confirm your word with the signs and miracles and wonders that this is. See, the author is always present when you're preaching the gospel. If you're, if you're one with him, he's present. And he, he said, Lord, you know, they said, Lord, we pray that your signs follow. That's what they said. Lord, we pray you be with us. That's what we can pray. Because it's, it's a confirmation of the word. And I said, Lord, if you don't confirm your word, I'm not going to preach it. I need you with me. I need you. I need, the mess I need you to give me the messages. I don't want to preach from here. I want to preach from here and what you give me. And we see here Isaiah 10, 27 as I, as I spoke of earlier, it shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck, and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. 
And that's where the problem comes in. We, that's why people never change when they leave a church. There's no anointing. There's no power. We've turned church into a country club, comedy van, donut and coffee donut show, and I'm not against that, and, and lights and, and smoke and all these things. We've turned it into that to try to make the people comfortable. Let me tell you something this morning. If you're, if you're not living right and you're a child of God, I want you to be squirming in your seat this morning. I want the power of God hitting you, convicting you, because I'm worried about getting you into hell, amen? You might be mad at me for a moment, but you're going to thank me later when we meet together again in heaven. You say, you know, I'm glad you preached the gospel and the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm tired of spine. Listen, I am tired of spineless, no backbone, coward, crawfish preaching and preachers that won't stand up and preach the truth. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. They're sending people to hell because they're living. Listen, if you're in a compromised lifestyle, you better repent today because you're on your way to hell. That's what the Bible said. I'm, we, listen, we cannot compromise. You're either 100% in or you're 100% out. There's no in-between. There's no in-between. Take up your cross and deny yourself daily. Deny yourself daily. And that's what Jesus said. He wants to put that anointing. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind and set it oppressed at those Set at liberty those who are oppressed and preach the acceptable day of the Lord. And I come by to tell you, today is the day of the Lord. Today is the day of freedom. Jesus came 2,000 years ago to pay for your sin and to set you free. Today is that day of jubilee that you can celebrate that you got freedom in Jesus this morning. But we see this here. And we go on down. After, the, after you have been forged... The fullness of God's glory can be seen in your vessel. Ezekiel 26, 9 says this. He will direct his battering rams against your walls, and with his axes, he will break your down. We are the axes. We are the battering rams of the Spirit to destroy the works of the devil. If we don't do it, it don't get done. You just got to decide, yes, this is for me. Yes, I'm a believer, and I'm going to step out and do it. See, that's why I said we need some old-time preachers that weren't afraid to preach the truth. I remember a time back when I was young, I would go to church, and preachers did, wasn't scared of the people. They wasn't scared of the culture. They didn't care what people thought of them. They would stand up, and listen, I love everybody. I love every sinner, but you got to repent. And they would stand up, and they would preach on homosexuality. And, man, I'll tell you, they would shout the house down. This, when we preach it now, everybody gets real quiet. Oh, my God, I can't believe he just said that. Who cares? That's what the Bible says. Well, them crawl, they, they get up, listen, they preach on the cross-dressers. We call them transgenders now. And people shout the house down. Yes, preach it, preacher. Somebody will stand up and preach the truth. We'll be afraid of the culture. That's what we need back in the pulpits. We need forged by fire prophets and preachers and evangelists that will preach the truth uncompromised and unedited. And we had preachers that would preach on sin. They would call it out and call people to repentance, and the, and the pews would fill up. Yes, then we had preachers that would come down. They would preach on hell. Yep. You don't even hear that in these Kool-Aid churches anymore. Right. Yep. There's still a heaven, and there's still a hell. And if you don't repent of your sins, hell is where you'll line up at. The Bible says the worm dieth not, and the fire is never quenched. Yes. You're going to be sitting here. If you're in here this morning and you're lost, and you die tomorrow, you're going to be sitting there thinking about this message. Yep. That worm's going to be rolling. You're just, man, that preacher, he was, he was preaching. He was, he was telling me the truth. He was telling me if I didn't repent, this is where I was going to be at. And the, the rich man told Lazarus, he told Abraham, to send Lazarus to touch my tongue. Get it, put some water on his finger, send him down here. The fire is hot and I'm thirsty. He said, just touch his tongue, touch his finger on my tongue. And he says, send Lazarus to warn my family, warn my friends that this hell is real. He says, well, they don't listen to Brett. They don't listen to Jeff. They don't listen to Jay. They don't listen to Sean. They don't listen to Monty. They are not going to listen to me. He said, they don't hear the prophets. They're not going to hear me. I'm preaching under the anointing of the Holy Ghost this morning. Amen. Listen, folks. The gospel's never changed. It's still turn or burn. You have to decide. I love you this morning. I love God this morning. I have the fear of the Lord on my life. 
preachers would stand up and preach that. Convicting power of God would draw people down. And they would repent and weep and cry over their sins. And now we come in our week in and week out and we live in our sin and we don't care. We don't care anymore. We've lost the fear of God in our nation. We've lost the fear of God in our churches. We've lost it in our homes. When will the fear of the Lord come back? Listen, I'm burning hotter. I'm not backing off at all. If anything, I'm getting bolder, and I'm burning hotter, and I can care less. I'm putting the devil on notice. I want to give him a headache every time he hits the floor. Well, I hope he don't run across this person. I know they're going to be healed. I hope he don't run across this person. The demon's going to come out of him. I'll lose territory. It's time to take territory for the kingdom, but it can only be with the forging through the fire and the anointing and the power of the cross this morning. My God, y'all got me stirred up. Y'all got me sweating this morning. Whew. Oh, man. As we close this morning. <laughs> as we close this morning. You've got to decide. What side of the fence you're on? You've got to decide if you're going to allow God to go take you through that process. It's not fun. It's not fun. There's a compromised Christianity in America. And I'm going to read, I'm going to read a scripture here. Jeremiah 50, 51, 20 says this. It says, you are my battle axe and weapons for war. You are my battle axe and and my weapons for war. He doesn't need dual weapons. He doesn't need cemetery preachers. He needs weapons that are forged, that are sharp, that have been sanded, that have been heated. And once it's all done, the sanding's done. The last part of the process, the last part of the process, they heat it back up one more time and pull it back in. He dips it in the oil till it cools the room temperature. This is the seal. God puts the anointing of the Holy Ghost on you before he fully reveals his glory in you. He says, you've been forged. You've been beat on. You've been shipwrecked. You've been lashed 49 times. You've been beaten and left for dead. Shipwrecked three times. Same thing. You've been chained up in prison. Forging, forging, forging. Those who endure to the end, so shall them be saved. Those that endure to the end, those are the ones that shall be. Listen, you've got to endure. If you really got Christ in you, if you really got the anointing in you, you can endure. You can do it. No weapon for them to get you shall prosper. I'm trying to encourage somebody this morning. Do not back up off the process this morning. Do not back up. He says, you are my battle axe, my weapons for war. If you're not making, listen, and he's the one doing the swinging. He's the one doing the swinging. And the sharper you are, the more productive you can be. Come on, somebody. I'm preaching this morning. He says, for with you, I will break the nations in pieces. I know he's talking about Israel. We're grafted in. I'm, I'm applying this to us. With you, I will break nations in pieces. With you, I will break cities in pieces and shake the gates of hell if you'll just allow me to mold you in that process. With you, I will destroy kingdoms. A spiritual destroying of Satan's kingdom. That's what I love about deliverance. Because it sheds the light on Satan's kingdom and people can't deny it's not real when demons are flying out of people and manifesting in the mighty name of Jesus. He wants to break nations. But you got to go through the fire. I know some of y'all going through a fire right now. Don't back up. We've all been through it. I can go through testimony, through testimony. This is the forging process. Don't try to go around it. Don't try to get a bunch of knowledge. Go after him. Do you know him? 
Say, Lord, I, I know I don't know everything, but I need you. I need the secret place. I need the anointing. Without him, I can do nothing on my own. I can't do anything. I need him when I walk out the door. I need him when I go to sleep at night. I need him when I wake up in the morning. But you got to decide, am I going to go through it? you got to decide if you have a calling on your life this morning. If you're going to pick up that toilet brush, you're going to pick up that parking lot ministry. Because I desire for the day when i got parking lot attendants, people come in in wheelchairs, they're healed in the parking lot, set free in the parking lot, because i got some attendants with the power of God on their life. No, man, you don't need that chair anymore. In Jesus' name, be healed. Now get up and walk into church. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I want to see. That is the true church. It's supposed to be the hospital for the sick, hospital for the mentally sick and physically sick, the broken, the lost, the broke bus, those that have been trampled on by the world that said you're no good, said you'll never amount to anything. Jesus said, no, I have purpose. I have plan for your life. You are somebody. I'm going to make you somebody in my name. We have a identity crisis in America. We have lost our ever-loving mind. We've lost people's lost their identity. They put this filth in our kids, in our kids' eyes, in their ears. Let me tell you, young people, your true identity will come from your Maker, and His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's the God of all. He's the Creator. Through Him, everything was made, even you. The breath and the body this morning that you have is being held to, together by J-E-S-U-S. Yeah. He's holding you together this morning, whether you know it or not. People don't realize that. Taking a breath, it's Jesus. You look around, it's Jesus. I know people created things, but he, he, he created the ones that created things. Amen. Vessels. Your true identity will be found in him. If you repent and believe the gospel, say, so you know what? You, God has created you to be like Christ. And I'm going to teach you that on that new man teaching coming up. He wants you to be like Christ. If you want to be God's battle axe, you're going to have to be forged in the fire. It's not fun. It's not fun. And, and sometimes you may walk alone. Sometimes your whole family may turn against you. Jesus said, I, I didn't come to, he said, look, I came to bring a sword. I came to bring division. Mother-in-law against sister-in-law. Daughter-in-law, father-in-law against, listen, he said, I come to divide with truth. Some's going to stand with you and some ain't, but you're going to have to figure out what side you're going to stand on, even if you stand alone, because it's your eternal, listen, it's your eternal soul. You're not going to stand for mommy and daddy and brother and sister. You're going to stand before the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And the only thing that's going to matter, did you get washed in the blood of Jesus? Did you repent of your sins and be converted and have your sins blotted out? That's the gospel. It ain't come to Jesus and live like hell the rest of your life. It's come to Jesus and humble yourself. Repent of your sins and have a repentant heart. Lord, I messed up today. God, will you forgive me, God? I'm, and, and a godly sorrow leads you to repentance. We're not perfect, but it's having a repentive heart. Not, not arrogance. See, when, you, when you're in sin and you, for, and you don't repent about it, pride and arrogance comes in. And guess what? Here comes the devil. Be humble and repent. Be humble. Look, we're going to make mistakes. But if you're a new Christian, there's grace for you. God, he, he's, he's molding. You're going to fall down. Look, I made all kinds of mistakes when I got saved. But you know what? I found grace at the cross. I said, Lord, forgive me. I'm, I know I'm a work in process. I'm working on it. I'm working on my mouth. I'm working on my anger. I'm working on, you know, my alcohol. I'm working on these things, God. And you just take it to the foot of the cross. He's like, okay, my child, let's, let's keep, he keeps pouring, he keeps helping you. See, grace empowers you to live above sin because that's where forgiveness comes in. Not that, not that say, you know, I'm going to keep doing it and I'm going to keep living this way. That's arrogance and pride. It's like, you know what, Lord, I messed up. I realize that I'm struggling with this. Can you help me? So that's what grace comes in. It gives you the ability to have your sins clean and have a new slate. Maybe it's every day. Maybe it's once a week, especially when you're new. If you're a new Christian, the struggle is real. You're, you're taking on a new life. You're being washed by the Word of God. You're learning. You're growing. It's just like a newborn baby. I tell everybody, someone, when you got a newborn baby, guess what? He can't walk. He can't talk. He's got, every, listen, he's got everything he needs. He's got his hands and toes and, or she, you know, whatever. He's got a mouth. He's got all this stuff. But it, none of it's developed. And that's us. We're not developed. You got to look. They, they, and then they're two, three years old. They're walking around. They fall in the mud. They bust out a window. They, that's us. And we get, he corrects us. The Holy Spirit corrects us. And we fix it. And we go on. That's, that is what the Father does. 
And it's a growing problem. You're going to fall, get back up. But see what the devil does. Oh, you fell. You can't go to church this week because, look, you're a hypocrite. No, you're learning. You're growing. Don't listen to that devil. Don't listen to that devil. You're learning and growing. You're still in diapers. You're still on the milk. Amen? And that's okay because you got it's a process. Just like your natural growth, your spiritual growth is the same way. Some people don't grow up to they're 40 years old. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he says him. I've seen, you know, 30, 30 something years old, they, there's kids that still haven't grown up. They're still kids. And it's like that in a church, too. It doesn't mean God don't love them, it's just they're still trying to develop, you know what I'm saying? So, so think, I want you to think of it like that. So you're not going to be, when you get saved, you don't know everything and perfect. It's a growing process. That's what pastors, your preachers, your elders do. They're saying, hey, man, you're over here. You know, you're in the guide rail a little bit over here. I need to pull you back on the road. That's what we do. That's all, that's what that's all we do. God has helped us. We've had people help us, and now we can help you, and that's what we do. Does that make sense? God's full of love and mercy and compassion, but he's not, he don't like arrogance and pride. He don't like you just sin and just, oh, I don't care. I don't, who cares? You know, he'll forgive me, but no, you're in trouble. You keep walking that way. There's a place called hell. I don't, you can Listen, you can believe what you want. I read it in the Bible. You got to repent. You got to love God. You got to put him first. You got to put him first. Amen. With everybody standing this morning, we thank you, Lord. God, we thank you. Y'all got me sweating this morning. Forged by fire. Forged by fire. With every head bowed, is there anybody here that don't know the Lord? Say, man, I'm not saved. I need some Jesus. I, I need... I want to turn my life over to him. I want to repent this morning. I want to live for God. Is that you? You say, I want to live for God. I want to live for him. Anybody not saved this morning? Anybody not saved? Amen. Anybody this morning just needs some prayer? Say, you know what, man, I'm, I'm going through the forging process. You're speaking to me this morning. Is that anybody? A good half the church. Amen. Amen. I, listen, I go through it too. Hallelujah. Seems like about every three or four months I'm back in that fire. He said, no, you want more? You got to go through more. The more God gives you of his anointing and his power, and, and it, the more, it, more is going to be required. More is going to be required. So get ready. We say, Lord, I want to go to a new level. Say, you know what? The, the, the furnace is getting fired up. You're getting ready to get stuck in there. It's the truth, folks. I've been through I love you this morning. I'm, that's why I'm teaching you this, and I'm preaching this to you. It's real. But if you'll humble yourself and just start out with the small things, it's the little things. It's the little things this morning. And, Lord, we love you. And we thank you. I just want to pray for you this morning. I'm going to pray over you, then I'm going to open up the altar. If you need prayer, broken bones, broken homes, I don't, I don't care what it is. God's going to fix it right now. By faith, he's going to fix it right now. Father, we thank you, Lord. God, we, I thank you for the message, Lord. God, I thank you for all that you, Lord, that you, uh, just being a willing vessel, Lord. It's all by grace and mercy that I can stand up here and minister your word. I thank you, Father, that you've entrusted me with these people here, your people. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I thank you for that, Lord. And Lord, I, I just want to encourage them this morning, God, to keep moving forward. The, the race is real. The, the fights are real. The fire is real. And we thank you this morning, God. So I ask you to bless each one of them this morning, God. Touch them. Cover them in the blood of Jesus this morning, God. Take, lift up any heaviness right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Those that just, if their sin just heavy on their hearts, let them, let them repent of it this morning. Lift it away from them. And, Father, we thank you for that. And we give you the praise and glory for that this morning. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you need prayer, we're gonna, Miss Lindsay's going to sing. and We're just going to give God praise this morning and pray. And, and uh, let's, let, let's see what the Lord wants to do today. Amen.